thought today I would vlog a day in my life as you can see. I have been getting a lot of requests for a more in-depth look at my day so I thought why not film one today and just show you guys everything I do as a second grade teacher. So yesterday was actually Monday, today is Tuesday, but yesterday we had a teacher work day, so we didn't have school. Um, so today is our first day of school this week, so I'm kind of, it feels like a Monday right now. Um, I need to water my plant. I have my big Monstera plant back there, and I try to water it just once a week. They don't need a lot of water. So I wake up at around 6 a.m. like you guys saw, and I need to be at school by 7, 7.10-ish. Um, so that gives me enough time. I get ready really fast in the morning, so I just wake up and do my makeup and all that, and then I pretty much just head out the door after I make my coffee, and I get here at 7 o'clock on the dot, which is perfect. Um, my kids come at 7.20, so it's going on 7.10 right now. So they'll be here in about 10 minutes. So pretty much what I do every morning is I come in and I look over my plans real quick. Usually always the day before I set out my plans. So right now I have all my plans set out for the day. So all I need to do when I come, is, and come in is just kind of look over them. And then I turn on my smart board, my lights, and I get my good morning slide ready for the day that just has all the things they're supposed to do. Although, at this point in school it's been almost two months they know what to do by now when they come in they come in they put their backpacks away and then they just come straight to their table and we have free and reduced breakfast and lunch here at our school so they all almost all of them eat breakfast in the mornings so they just come straight to their tables and eat their breakfast so I don't give them morning work or morning choice or anything like that just because it usually takes a while anyway for them to sit down and get started eating and finish eating by the time the bell rings so they come in and just eat breakfast and I usually play some soft music and something new that I started incorporating this year is silent breakfast so one of my teammates he's awesome he's like a veteran teacher he's been teaching for over 18 years I learned so much from him he told me this idea last year um, because I kept going into his classrooms in the morning and I noticed that his classrooms were always so peaceful and zen and quiet and the kids could still socialize but it was very peaceful in there and I asked him what his trick was and he said that every morning five minutes um, before the bell rings he has a silent breakfast so they have a good 20 minutes in the morning to eat breakfast so for the first 15 minutes I let them socialize but I tell them they have to to keep it at a coffee shop voice level so nothing too loud or crazy and they have to stay in their seats and then the last five minutes before the bell rings we do a silent breakfast which I incorporated this on the very very first day of school so they know it very well when the bell rings I even hear a lot of my kids say oh sh it's time for silent breakfast and I turn on some videos and guys my kids love these I searched um, just like a compilation of satisfying videos so you know those satisfying videos on like snapchat or tiktok they have compilations of those on youtube and my kids love them because they're actually super relaxing to watch and i play like relaxing music with it and so my kids just sit there and eat breakfast quietly and watch the videos and so they kind of know that routine by now and then after the five minutes is up, our bell rings for the day. We watch our morning announcements, which our principal makes, and then we get ready for morning meeting. I wish I could show you guys all that we do during the day and like actually film the entire day, but obviously I can't do that because I can't show my kids or anything like that, but I will do my best to explain to you guys everything that we do throughout the day. Um, and so every, every morning we have morning meeting no matter what. All the kids come to the carpet and we have an information center over there, which I will show you in just a second, where we do calendar, the weather and temperature, and then days of the week. And then after that, we do share time. And lately, share time has been getting a little crazy. So I tell them we can do share time as long as they can do it respectfully. So sitting, 
listening to whoever's sharing eyes and ears on them um so that's something really good to do if your kids love share time but it gets a little out of control and just i mean leave it up to them like i always tell them we can do share time as long as you guys can handle it so if you guys can handle it then every single person can share if you can't handle it then we'll just get through a few people and then have to go back to our tables so that is usually every single morning what we do and then we go right on into math. So like I said, this is our information center. So we have our big carpet area right here and then our information center over here. So one student comes up and they grab one of those sticks and they do the calendar. So they just say the month, day and date. Then they choose someone to come up and do the weather and that person chooses someone to do the days of the week, which I need to change. Over here we have our objectives board, um, so I actually need to change those this week as well, just our standards for what we're learning. Then we have our little read aloud corner. Um, some mornings I pick these lucky ducks that has their student number on it for who gets to share. Um, these are our class read alouds. Right now we just started Magic Treehouse and we're on book number two. I like to read that series every year. I did it last year and so I want to do it again this year. This is our schedule for the day. Every morning I go over this uh, schedule with the kiddos even though most days it's the same. Every now and then we have a few changes but it's pretty much the same every single day. Then something I did all last year and I've been loving this year as well is teacher versus students. So every day the students know if they're doing a great job, then they get a point and I'll just grab one of these base 10 um, little circles and put it up on there. But if they're not doing a good job, then I get a point and whoever gets the most points at the end wins and then they just get a piece of candy if they win. We also have been doing team points. So uh, each table is a team number, one, two, three, four, and five. And so lately I've been loving doing this because my kids thrive off of competition. So I'll say, all right, the first team to line up quickly gets a point. So I just grab my marker and give them a tally. I've recently had to add this up here, but this is only under extreme circumstances. I've only ever had to take away one minute of recess, but I think just having it up here as a visual, visual has been really um, nice for them because um, we are quite a chatty bunch. So sometimes it takes a while for us to even get started with an activity. And I always say, if you waste my time, then I'll waste yours. And so I'll kind of walk over here and they know if I put a tally, that means they lose a recess minute, but they can also gain recess minutes if they're doing a really good job. So this is something last minute. Obviously I have my cute like cricket vinyl and then just written up here with red marker. But yeah, this is only under extreme circumstances. I don't like to take away recess, but I will if they are wasting too much time. going on 11 15 and I just dropped my kids off at lunch but I thought I would tell you kind of what we've been doing with our day so far so so far we have had morning meeting math then we went to recess came back and did some foundations and reading but I wanted to make sure this video was very in-depth so I wanted to talk about some things that we did all the way back at morning meeting this morning. So something that I do just like classroom management wise whenever we come over to the carpet is I always tell them that by the time our morning announcements are done, their breakfast needs to be in the trash and they need to be back at their tables with their tables cleared off and ready to go for the day. And since we have done that every single day the entire school year so far they're pretty good at it they still need a few reminders but for the most part they know by the time morning announcements are over when i turn around after taking attendance their tables need to be cleared so i always hear them kind of like bustling behind me to clear off their tables and stuff and after that i say okay now i'm looking for a table that is cleared off and quiet and ready to come to the carpet and i only choose tables that are sitting there quietly whether they have their quiet sign up or just sitting quietly to come over to the carpet and i always say i'm looking for a table that can show the rest of the class how we come to the carpet so 
even though we've been in school for two months, I'm still always reinforcing those expectations and procedures. And so I always, always have someone model it. And so I say, who can come to the carpet and show the rest of the class how it's done? So you make it kind of like a big deal. Like who can come show the class how it's done, how we come to the carpet um, and be that role model for the rest of the class. And that's when you have a lot of kids like raising their hand to volunteer. So then I choose the table that's sitting quietly. They come to the carpet and then I call another table who's sitting quietly and I say, okay who thinks they can do it just as well as table four or whatever and once everyone's on the carpet they need to come to the carpet quietly sit crisscross applesauce hands in their laps and if they come to the carpet even if they talk just a little bit i have them go back to their table and try again because i mean even though we've been in school for a couple months you still have to stay really really strong and strict on those expectations otherwise they'll just push it if i let a couple people talk then everybody will come to the carpet and talk so you really have to strongly reinforce that then once we come to the carpet i always say i'm looking for a quiet friend to start us off with our calendar and they all love getting up and doing the calendar and weather and stuff like that so they all always go quiet right away and i call whoever's sitting quietly to come up and do our calendar and i always say um I always let the person who does the calendar choose the next person to go to do the weather. And so I always say, okay, I want you to make sure that you choose someone who is being respectful to you while you shared and someone who's sitting quietly. And so then the rest of the class knows that they're only going to get picked if they're sitting quietly. And so we do that. It's kind of a process throughout the entire morning meeting. That's just a good way to keep your carpet time running more smoothly and efficiently. And during share time, like I said, if they start talking, then I'll just end the share time so they know that it's only going to continue if they're being kind. But what I do is I let them choose the next person to share. So if one of my kids are sharing, I say, now, thank you for sharing. Now I want you to choose someone who was respectful to you while you shared to share next. And that way they know that if they're listening and respectful to the person sharing, then maybe they'll get picked next. So um, I kind of just keep that cycle going. And I mean, we do that all day with everything that we do. If I ever have kids involved, I always say, okay, I want you to pick someone to go next who's doing a good job. And so that just kind of sets the tone for the day and they know exactly what to expect. And then I just call teams table by table to go back to their seat and then we get ready for math. And so today we did some math stations. And so like I just showed you for our math stations, I had some students come to the back and work with me. And for today, I had some of my lower kids come to the back table and work with me every now and then I'll switch it up. Obviously like our stations switch up. But today I had some of my lowest kids come to the back with me. And those are just students who need a lot of extra help and so we worked on this kind of fun activity it says my name so they write their name they write it in a tin frame how many letters are in their name and then they have to draw a picture of something that starts with the first letter of their name so this is just something that's kind of light and easy and fun to get some of my kids who just need a lot of motivation to even get started um and it actually went really well so they worked on this and i've been working really hard on getting some fun math station activities for the hands-on um so uh, over summer i found some fun cards like some flash cards in the target dollar spot so they have like subtraction and addition ones i also found this game on tbt it's by molly phillips and i need to laminate it because it's getting destroyed but basically it just comes with these little cards and each card has an addition problem on it and then they pull a card and if they get it right they move forward three spaces if they get it wrong they move back a space and then they just have to compete and i just used our little building block cubes as one of their players and they love that i mean anything that you make like a fun board game they're all about another really fun hands-on activity to do is we have these um cut up number lines so what i do is i put them in teams and they race to see who can put the number line together the fastest or i just have one team on the carpet putting together the number line and you can make it even harder by giving them the rule that they can't talk while putting together the number line so they have to do it quietly that's always really fun i love dice games as well my kids love dice and playing anything with dice games so one of the dice games they can play is they can roll two numbers and then add them together or they can roll two numbers and mark if they are greater than or less than coloring activities are really fun for hands-on as well this one is a roll and color game so they just roll the number and color it and for my more advanced students i tell them to roll two dice and whatever um they have to add the two numbers together and then color it and this one on the back is just a fill in the missing what comes next number this one 
It doesn't say who it's from on TPT, so I'd have to look that up. Another activity that I found on TPT by Donna Bosher, I think is how it's pronounced, Bosher, is it comes with all these cards. I need to cut them up still. I haven't played this one yet. And different numbers on them, and there's a bunch of ways that you can play it. So you can either play war, so you deal five cards to each student. They each flip one up at a time, and they have to decide which one is greater or less than. The one with the bigger card wins, just like you play war with a deck of cards. Or you can count them together and so each one deals a card then they need to add the two cards together um, they can deal a card and decide which one's greater than or less than they can deal a card and decide how many um, ways you can make it with coins um, and they also come with some coin ones so you could also do the same activity just with coins so you deal a certain amount of cents and you have to um, play war with it or figure out which one's greater than or less than. I love those activities and kids love them because it's more like a game and just makes it really fun for them to play. But so right now that is what I have as far as like games that they can play on hands on. I also have a bunch of workbooks which my kids love. This is more for beginners to practice writing their numbers which I do have some kids that are still practicing that. Um, I found some of these if you guys followed me over summer when I was shopping in the Target dollar spots. I found some of these workbooks that are actually really fun and my kids love them so basically they just have little workbook pages in there shapes numbers and um, this one's over time money subtraction addition so these are always really fun for the kids to work on as well just something more hands-on for our reading station I'm still working on finding more fun hands-on activities but this one guys so much fun we did this actually as a class the other day and now it's a station of mine since we practiced it I have the alphabet printed out you can do a lot of different games with the alphabet um, you can do the I have who has games so especially really great for kindergarten and first grade um, you can have a student say I have F who has O this one says I have A who has F and so it has the different ones written on it I have B who has K and then the person who has K on their forehead needs to realize and if they're learning their letters it's really good um, letter practice and they can say oh I have K who has and then it'll say on the card or you can do it in alphabetical order you can say I have A who has B if they're in kindergarten and still learning their letters what I had my kids do was I gave each kiddo in my class like two letters and they had to put them in order from A to Z but I told them that they could not talk so I said you can use hand signals but but you cannot use your voice at all, which was actually really fun to watch. And they did so well. I said, if you talk, you're out. It's like Silent Ball, if you've ever played that. I said, if you talk, you're out, you'll go back to your table and the remaining players will be the winners. And they all did so well. None of them talked. I was so surprised. I thought they would all start yelling right away, but none of them talked. They all worked really quietly and they ended up getting it. It took a while actually, because some of my students who struggled a little bit more with their letters needed a lot of help from the other ones. But that's kind of what I liked about it is it was a really big teamwork game. And then I also have some of these highlights and phonics booklets workbooks that they can work on as well which these are always a lot of fun and really great practice i also have this fun writing activity so it's just called pick a story you guys have probably heard of it they basically just pick any one of these out and this one says write about a crazy dream that you've had and every single one of these has a different writing prompt on it so this is really great for reading or writing activities as well so i know that was kind of a lot but um so far that is what we did for math after math we go to lunch and then recess and I do have recess duty every morning so I have to go out there with them and then we came back and we do foundations and foundations is our reading curriculum so they are learning their letter sounds and how to put together letter sounds to make words right now um, if you've never used foundations it's a really really great phonics and phonemic awareness curriculum and I have used it now for two years and I really like it and I think it really really helps the kids learn how to read um, so I have no complaints about it so far but we are in the middle of learning about our open and closed syllables and our long and short vowels which we are going to do one of these vowel activities today so they are going to write down their long e's short e's and it goes through 
the rest of the vowels and then they're going to use those words in a sentence so we're working on our long and short vowels which they actually have down really well we started learning those on the first day of school and now they're getting to the point where they can pretty much identify a long or short vowel like that now it is our lunch break so i just went and dropped them off at lunch and it is really nice this year's a little bit different our breaks are um we have just one really long break in the middle of the day whereas last year we had lunch break and then i'd go pick them up and then we'd have their specials later on in the day um but we had a little bit of a schedule change so now they go straight to specials after lunch and recess which means we have about an hour and a half break which is really really nice um and i wasn't sure how i was gonna like it at first not having those two separate breaks but I love it. It's the best having this long break. I look forward to it all morning and it gets me through the rest of the day. Just having some time to myself and time to get work done, eat my lunch. Some days I literally just sit in here and relax. Um, it just depends on the day and like what I have, but it's a long enough plan time for me to get a lot of work done if I need to. So yeah, I've been really loving having the long break. My class is doing pretty well today. We had a few hiccups. I just have a very chatty class this year. I've said that a thousand times but we are just working on just getting it together faster like transitions are really hard for us and I mean if I give them an ounce of freedom they take it a mile and they just think it's okay to talk and go crazy whenever they have two seconds of being able to talk to themselves or with them with each other and so yeah we're just working on like being able to reel it in especially whenever I try to get their attention giving me their attention quickly and I didn't have that problem last year with my class so this year it's definitely been a little bit more of a struggle I also just received a new student last year which I don't think I've told you guys about but I did receive a new student and it's been a little bit tough um, transitioning him into the new class it's always hard once you have like a really good classroom environment and then you're introduced new students in as the year goes but all is going well it's just been a little bit hectic but today has also kind of felt like a Monday since we didn't have school and we're coming back from a three-day weekend so the kids are like extra extra crazy so I pretty much brought an easy lunch today if you guys saw my packet this morning I just brought a few things to munch on I just brought like an apple some chips I love bringing these balanced breaks like cheese nuts and cranberries and then some fruit a fruit cup <laughs> so i'm just going to sit here and relax for i have about 10 minutes until i have to go bring them to specials and then i'm just going to come back and i'll have another 45 minutes left of my lunch break all right guys it's obviously a few hours later i just left school and kathy and i went and got our nails done i just got this super cute brown tip french manicure fall vibes i guess but the reason why I didn't vlog was because we had a super crazy hectic end to our day. Um, it was just a crazy day. I heard Mercury was in retrograde. So that pretty much explains my entire day. But basically, whenever I went and picked up the kids from specials, we just came back and did that reading activity that I showed you. And then we did some silent reading. And that was pretty much the end of our day. Um, we had to have a lot of talks today just about being kind to each other. And basically, my kids were just kind of, I don't know, lashing out today at each other. It seemed like they were like all getting on each other's last nerves, which it's that time of year. Like the honeymoon phase is way over. And so they were lashing out. Um, but yeah, it was crazy end of the day. Totally forgot to pick up my camera. Went and dropped them off at buses. And lately we've been having really bad shortages on bus drivers. So uh, we, every single day, we have to bring some kids to the library and then the bus has to like circle back for them. So we always have to stay after to help out with watching the kids in the library. And it's just been really crazy lately at school. But um, I am actually on my way to a meeting. Our district puts together these first year mentor meetings and second year mentor meetings. So all last year as a first year teacher, I went to these meetings and again, I go to them as a second year teacher, but it's really nice that they, they give us each a mentor and then we have to go to these meetings um, with a bunch of other first and second year teachers. So Kathy from Mrs. Collins Bunch, if you guys follow her on Instagram, if you're new around here, her and I are best friends. And so we, um, actually work at the same school and so we go to obviously these second year teacher meetings together and so we decided to go get our nails done before our meeting because why not <laughs> but we're running super late the meeting was at 4 30 and it might be like 4 45 right now so we are driving to go to the meeting walking in late 
super embarrassing, but that's okay. Gotta do what you gotta do when you need to get your nails done. And yeah, we're about to go to that meeting. And I think this is a math meeting. I think they're kind of talking to us about math curriculum and planning for math and who knows. Um, but they told us to bring our teacher manuals for math. So yeah, I'm gonna head to that and then I will see you guys after. just got out of the meeting and made it home and the meeting was really nice it was actually really short we got out really early we basically just met with a small group of other first and second year teachers and just talked about how the year is going any ups and downs that we're having and then um, we did a little PD on our math curriculum that we're using right now but yeah that is not a usual thing in a day in my life that i do but we do i think have three or four of those meetings throughout the year this year and they are mandatory in order to get your you get like a beginning year certification after you complete two years of first year training and um we also have to go through like observations as first year teachers and like I said we have mentors that we work with as well. So I think every school should have some sort of first year teacher training or mentorship or something just to help out those teachers that are new. And it's really nice connecting with other new teachers, being all in the room with a bunch of new teachers. Obviously we just have so much in common, so much we can relate on and we were all just like bouncing ideas off each other and we were all relating on a lot of the struggles that we've been having this year and so it's it's just nice it's like Instagram <laughs> all the first year teachers and second year teachers that I follow we all connect on there it's like that but like actually seeing a lot of them in real life so that was really nice um but I actually just made it home so I'm about to go inside my boyfriend Kyle and I are going to make some dinner eat together and then I will take you guys with me through some of my night routine all right before we eat dinner I'm going to take you guys through my nighttime skincare routine honestly I always do my skincare like right as I get home because I just love taking off my makeup there's like no better feeling than taking off your makeup and getting into comfy clothes right when you get home that way the rest of the night I can just relax so let's do the skincare okay the first thing I do is take off my makeup and the best way I have found to take off my makeup is just by using oil this is the deep cleansing oil by DHC. It's my favorite. It is such a gentle way to get off your makeup, especially your eye makeup. And I found that it seriously just like dissolves your makeup. Okay, now that I look crazy, I'm going to go in with the Tula Skincare. This is the Cult Classic Purifying Cleanser. Okay, now that all my makeup is off, I like to go in with the Tula Balancing Act Purifying and pH Balancing Toner Pads. seriously feel so good so cooling and refreshing on my skin and they really help getting off like any excess makeup and it helps with just balancing your skin tone purifying and it just makes my skin feel so much cleaner when I'm done so this morning you guys saw me using their eye balms which I have been loving I've been using the rose glow and get it cooling and brightening eye balm and this is the one that i have been using in the morning just because it is so cooling on my under eyes and really wakes me up and the one i've been using at nighttime is this 24 7 power swipe hydrating day and night treatment eye balm and this one is also super cooling and just refreshing under the eyes so i just sweep it around and lastly i go in with this Tula Skincare 24-7 Moisture Hydrating Day and Night Cream. This morning I used their um, Tula's Sunscreen and Moisturizing Primer, which I also really love. But this one feels so, so good at the end of the day. It's so cooling. Skincare 
hair is done. Thank you so much to Tula for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in shopping their products, I will have all of the products linked down below as well as a link to Tula's website. Right, now I'm just going to change into some comfies. I always change the second I get home. <laughs> Thank you.